For those of you who are aiming for medicine at Monash, you have your interviews in early January, so I thought I'd start a series where I show my sample answers for MMI questions. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Darren. I just finished my first year of medical school at Monash University here in Melbourne, Australia. Today we'll be looking at a MMI scenario which I just found online and I think it's pretty good in terms of showing how to think very broadly. So let's get into it. I'm going to pop the scenario on the screen in a bit. I'm not going to talk too much about it. I'd just like you guys to have a read of it. Think of what you'll be thinking about, what are the key issues and how you would answer the coming questions. But after I've answered the questions, I will talk briefly about what I was thinking and um, why I answered the question in a certain way. So let's get started into the first question. Kathy's definitely been put into a very difficult situation. Um, so if I was Kathy, I'd have to pick between two very hard choices. One is I move into state with my mother, I have to repeat another year of uni. And secondly, I could stay where I am um, and live with my aunt, but there are also certain disagreements there. So there are definitely a lot of considerations I need to take into account and weigh up before I actually make my final decision. So on one hand, we have me moving over with my mother into state. And the problems with this are that I will have to leave my support system, leave all my friends in the city that I'm currently living in. Um, and also repeating another year of uni is probably not the most uh, most morally uplifting activity either and in addition to that just repeating uni is very costly as well so financial um, financial money is a big problem for my family and for me to repeat another year of uni would probably be very draining for my mother now ways to navigate this are that I could appeal to the uni and really like email the, the, the people there and also look into whether there are scholarships or financial aid available for my family um, and also another advantage of moving in with my mother is that uh, she is a single mother and a widower, so she may be very dependent on me and moving to a new state and promoting, which likely means that she'll be much busier. She may require someone to support her and um, in that case, I would definitely move into state because she would really require my help. Now, on the other hand, we have me staying here and living with my aunt, so obvious, obvious benefits are that I don't have to repeat another year of uni. Now, the main issues with this course of action are firstly that I don't like my aunt or don't get along that well with her and um, secondly the three dogs so with the first issue of me and my aunt I think it's very important to investigate the extent of that disagreement whether it's something at a fundamental core value we just disagree about something which will be very difficult to navigate or maybe it's just that I'm not entirely comfortable with her because I don't know her that well and in that case getting to know her meeting up beforehand could help resolve the problem now with the issue of the dogs it is a like an important issue, but I wouldn't say it's the biggest deal in the world. Um, communication is probably the best way to resolve this. I could speak to my aunt, hopefully have the dogs um, kept separate from me, maybe in the backyard, maybe just you know downstairs away from my room. So those are the main considera considerations I'd have to make. Um, with my mother, if she's really, really dependent on me and needs me there to um, sort of support her, and also if we can achieve financial aid from the university, then I think moving interstate is the best choice. And also if um, my disagreement with my aunt is quite severe. And on the other hand, if the issue with my aunt can be navigated quite easily and repeating another year of uni is um, very, very financially draining, then I would choose to stay with my aunt. Let's have a talk about my answer there. Um, key things to note about that answer is that it was really well structured. So this is a very difficult scenario because there are two options and each option comes with its own shortcomings, its own benefits. So it's really, really important to signpost and structure your answer well. So I first looked at the scenario of moving with my mum, benefits, shortcomings, how can we get over the shortcomings? Then I looked at my aunt and I made it very clear when I was talking about each and when I was talking about specific aspects of each scenario. Now, another good thing I did with this um, answer is that I did give a decision in the end. So usually with questions like this, it's not going to be like from the outset, I have a decision already. Because here there are considerations. I do need to know how close I am with my aunt, how easily those issues can be navigated. And it's fine to acknowledge that, but I think it's not really good to just say, oh, okay, so after weighing all those things up, I'll make my decision, 
decision then. I think it's really, really shows a good understanding and a good clarity of thinking. If you can say that if this, this, this is true, um, then I will move in, then I'll move in to stay with my mom. And if this, this, this is the case, then I'll move in with my aunt. Because I think this is a scenario that lends itself to that. And apart from that, you might notice at the start of the um, scenario, I sort of gave a bit of a summary of it. Um, and it's not like a complete summary, like I don't repeat the scenario. I really focus on the important parts of it. So, you know, I say one on one hand, we have me moving into state with my mother. We have to repeat a year of college. On the other hand, I have me staying with my aunt, the problem with the dogs and my disagreement with my aunt. So really breaking down the scenario to those really simple elements. And that gives me a bit of time to summarize and think about what I'm going to say next, but also gives an examiner um, a very clear idea of what issues and what um, what uh, variables um, I'll be weighing up in my discussion. That's a very interesting question. Um, I think it can be argued that Kathy's mum is being somewhat selfish um, because she is moving into state and you know forcing her daughter into quite a difficult decision. But ultimately, I don't believe that she's being selfish um, because her move to interstate is not arbitrary. Um, it's because she has received a promotion and so she can have better financial aid for her daughter and for college and for just living expenses in general. And I think that is a very like kind act for um, Kathy's mother to participate in. And also, I don't think it's that easy for Kathy's mother either. Um, she's really responsible for looking after her daughter. Um, it's not clear in the scenario whether there are other... Um, sort of parental figures in Kathy's life. And also, Kathy's mother also has to move interstate for that job to happen. She probably has her own friends, her own support network, um, but she has to uproot all of that as well. So while I do think there, at a surface level, it appears that she may be selfish because we see that Kathy is forced into quite a difficult decision. Um, but I think ultimately, when you look at the reasons for why Kathy's mother is moving interstate, um, it's not really that selfish at all. All right, let's have a talk about that question. So firstly, with that question, the moment I heard it, or like read it, or no, you would hear it in the actual MMI, um, because they read the question to you, I, I realized that it's not that deep of a question. Like, I just don't think she's being that selfish, no matter how you argue it. Um, and so I wouldn't try and fluff and spend a lot of time on it. It's better to spend time on the better questions. And if there is, you know, time left over at the end, maybe you can return to this question and just, just say some stuff. Um, but just really answer it, hit the main points and just move on. Don't feel like you need to spend equal amounts of time on each question. Um, and here, when you feel like there's a clear answer, just go for it. You don't always need to be quite um, equivocating and not going left or right. I think here it's quite clear. I don't think Kathy's mother is being selfish in any capacity. Um, but I do think it is good to acknowledge why people might think that. Because they're not going to ask like a completely unreasonable question most of the time. Um, so I say, okay, I understand why people might think Kathy's mother is being selfish. But ultimately, for most of my talk and just... Like, for me as a person, I just don't think she's being selfish. And that's what I would argue and be quite firm about it. Okay, so a difficult decision I've had to face in the past. I think one of the most difficult decisions I've had to make was deciding which extracurriculars to sacrifice for my academics in year 11 and year 12, and also to what extent should I sacrifice those extracurriculars. So those activities were always a really big part of my life. They helped me relieve stress. And um, these were namely debating, public speaking, swimming, piano. Uh, in particular, swimming and piano were activities that I've participated in since I was really, really young, like five or six years old. And I would do them multiple times a week and compete at a very high level in them. And they were basically a core part of my identity and who I was as well. So it was a really difficult decision for me to think about how much I should sort of take back from those activities to focus on my academics, which I also thought were really important. Now, the best method to attack this for me was that I really spoke to everyone around me, my parents, um, my teachers, my coaches, who really knew me well, and I really discussed, I shared everything with them, discussed my options with them. And the main way I learned how to navigate this was to really think about what I wanted to achieve. So with things like swimming and piano, I had competed at a very high level, but I didn't want to in the future. Like I wasn't aiming for the Olympics or anything like that. And I'd done most of my grades with piano as well. So thinking like that, I was happy to cut down a bit. And also because with swimming, I was just really enjoying um, competing for the school. And most of the school events are like shorter. So I didn't have to train as much. 
Uh, with things like public speaking and debating, um, I thought that they were a bit rarer throughout the year. Public speaking is only a couple of times. Um, so I didn't think they were a big impact on my academics. And also I knew myself as well. I'm you know, quite disciplined, um, quite like motivated. And so I knew I could maximize my time and wouldn't waste too much time outside of my extracurriculars. And also, honestly, those activities you know, help relieve a lot of my school stress as well. Um, so ultimately, I cut down a bit on swimming and piano, kept up public speaking, debating, and of course, you know, studied really hard in year 11 and year 12. So the main lesson I learned from that and a way that I've sort of adapted to tackle difficult decisions in the future as well is to really think about what I want to achieve in the future, um, what I want to what goals I want to hit in terms of my academics, my extracurriculars, and then make decisions and shift my time and effort based on where I want to be in the future. I think that sort of retrospective way of looking at things was really helpful for me. Okay, um, so that was the final question. Just a heads up, in your actual MMI, you will have four questions, not, not three. Uh, this one just said three. So with that last question, um, that's how they sort of slide in personal questions. They tack it on to the end of a scenario. Now, Two things are really important with how to answer this question. Um, firstly, you have to make the examiner emotionally invested in you. Okay. Um, so for example, with swimming, right? If I just said I had to cut down on swimming to focus on my academics, they'll be like, okay, like cool, great. Kind of sad, but you know, whatever. You gotta make them feel invested. You gotta talk about so for me, and everything's true, right? But you just gotta tell it to the examiner, otherwise they don't know. You gotta say like Okay, I've been swimming since I was a child and I've competed at you know, nationals, at states. Um, it's brought me a lot of joy. Um, it's taught me discipline. It's something I really did like multiple times a week as well and it uh, helped, me, um, helped me gain more friends as well. By saying that, that's what makes it a difficult decision. Right? It's not the fact that, okay, I quit swimming. Uh, no, no, not I quit swimming. I cut down on swimming for academics. It's the fact that swimming was such a core part of me and I'd learned so much through it through the years. That's what made it difficult. So by... So even if your, um, your difficult decision isn't like massively groundbreaking, like you had to donate an organ or something, um, it is still personally um, emotional for you. So even though it's not objectively like massive, it's personal, personally um, deep for you and you really need to show that to the examiner. The second thing that's really important with this question um, that I think I did well, you don't have to do it, but I think just really adds a bit of zest to your answer um, is to talk about what you learned from it. So for me, it was learning that in the future, I will tackle difficult decisions by looking at it retrospectively. So in the future, what will I be happy that I did? What do I really want to achieve? Do I really want to compete at the Olympics? In that case, probably less academics, or maybe I'd cut down debating and, and really focus on uh, my, my like swimming training. And um, by showing them what you've learned, it shows that like it's just a good skill right, to show that you've learned things um, from your past mistakes and you're able to apply them in the future. Thank you everyone for tuning in to today's video. I hope it was really helpful. If you're nervous about the Monash interviews, it's, it's very normal um, because it's, it's fairly important, pretty important. Um, if you have any questions at all about the scenario today or just the MMI in general, leave them in the comments below. If you guys have any scenarios you'd like me to go through, feel free to email them to me. Uh, my email is in the description box below as always. And also, uh, you can you know leave them in the comments as well. Be happy to discuss with other people in the comments. And um, I'd be very happy to go through more scenarios in the future. Good luck preparing. Enjoy your holidays. Merry Christmas. And I look forward to seeing you all next time.